distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for having this close from which institution I've come. It is probably not hard to discern where I'd like to join this debate on resilience. It is probably a paradox that the rangelands, the source of so much of the world's food, and many of the ecosystem services that support food production and home to some of the world's most resilient lands and people are becoming increasingly vulnerable lands. But who are these people of the rangelands? They own a third of the world's cattle and half of the sheep and goats. They supply up to 55% of the beef, 40% of the small ruminant meat, and about 60% of the milk in many countries. They are major contributors to global food security, and by the nature of their products, animal source foods contribute significantly to nutritional security as well. Few peoples of the world have shown more resilience than the 800 million people or so who derive their livelihoods from the world's rangelands, where they depend mostly on livestock. These rangelands occupy about a third of the terrestrial surface. 70% of the world's agriculture are widely based there, and these lands are distributed in Asia, the Arabian Peninsula, Latin America, and here in Africa. They pose a number of challenges to the ecology and the ecology that these people must lead. From the extreme cold in places like Mongolia, to the recurring droughts of great severity, and duration here in Africa. A subset of these rangelands are the drylands, where at least 300 million people, mostly pastoralists, live. These lands constitute about 55% of the continent's land mass and contribute between 10 and 44% of the GDP, depending on the country. Africa's pastoralists are masters of managing the highly vulnerable eco ecologies across both space and time, to produce high-value products with an input-output efficiency that matches the best ranches of North America and Australia. This export pastoral management maintains a range of ecosystem services, carbon stocks, biodiversity, and water management that are fundamental not only to agriculture, but also to the health of the planet. Yet, these people are amongst the world's most vulnerable to a range of shocks that are increasing. These include climate variability, climate change, conflicts, food insecurity, market changes, disease outbreaks, and increasing competition for water, land, and water scarce resources. These unpredictable shocks are typically compounded by political neglect, policy biases, and low private public investment. But with some attention to them, enormous benefits can be derived, not only to secure their, their assets and the security of the planet, but diversify their livelihoods. The CGIR centers and programs are partnering with many national institutions and governments to ensure that this resilience is built and livelihoods can be improved. Amongst the most important technologies that are offered are index-based insurance, for example, the development of vaccines made them unstable so that they can imply without a whole chain, and efforts to diversify income given the high demand for milk in the developing world, improving markets, and the value of livestock. With support from the USAID, we have created the technical consortium which supports EGAD and EGAD countries to channel research findings into investments by multilateral and bilateral agencies. However, I could posit to you that we, although we know a lot about what can contribute to resilience, we do not know how to do it well. We yet do not know how to measure it, nor do we know how the trade-offs amongst various options to producing resilience can be balanced. I hope that the discussion which would follow would dwell into some of these issues. Chair, it would be remiss of me if, having said that there have been much government neglect of pastoral people in the rangelands, 
that I did not hasten to say that Ethiopia is a startling exemption to that. We have heard repeatedly today that Ethiopia has paid attention to its drylands and its pastoralists and to agriculture support. It would also be remiss of me if I did not say thanks to the Ethiopian government for hosting Hillary for the past 40 years and to celebrate that this year. And by our agreements with the government, we also host 10 other CGIR centers. Collectively, we are working on agriculture, agricultural productivity, and on resilience and livestock. These efforts in Ethiopia and for Ethiopia because of the importance of these rangelands elsewhere are also a benefit not only to the continent but to many other parts of the world. Thank you very much.